So next up we've got Meridian from 1990. So there's these two women, Catherine and her best friend Gina, who travel to Catherine's family castle in Italy after her father's death. And once they're there, the the two of them visit a local carnival where Gina invites the head magician, Lawrence, and his crew to the castle for dinner. And at the dinner, Lawrence drugs both the women and, and rapes Gina in front of his crew, and then he carries Catherine off to another room where he <laughs> strips her naked, and but eventually pulls away so his twin brother Oliver can instead get laid. <laughs> So as the film progresses, Catherine finds that the brothers are under this curse which turns them into these beasts or werewolves or whatever the fuck they're meant to be. And um, she kind of helps Oliver get what he wants done out of that. So (laughs) this is a movie that my wife tends to enjoy. She's seen it a few few times and that's kind of why I first saw it. I, I didn't watch it just recently. I did see it a year or two ago, but... Yeah, it's it's definitely not a movie that I really care that much for. I mean, it's it's got its moments, and the, there's a certain vibe to it that you can get from some full moon movies, like just just based on the locations and, and things like that. But yeah, there's there's a, a lot of different things about the movie that just <laughs> didn't do it for me. Yeah, so I I um I was enjoying this movie up to the point where the whole rape thing happened. I, I didn't really see that coming. I didn't know what was going to happen. So they went that way. So that's, that's like interesting. But um, like you said, I think the vibe's pretty solid. But then everything after that rape scene, like the, oh, I know you raped me, but I guess I love you, you know? Yeah, I, I, I didn't care for that whatsoever. And the whole like hate love thing between the brothers. You know, I keep you alive because I hate you. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I, I just, I just don't care. It's a bit over the top, melodramatic for me. <laughs> I almost felt like a uh, soap opera at times, to be honest. Um, and not a particularly gold one. I mean, but it, it's okay. It's an interesting movie. It, and if you're into like, you know, full moon movies, the subspecies series, you know, it's you'll probably get some enjoyment out of it. There's some solid nudity, I guess, if you don't mind nudity in the form of rape. So. There's also a pretty cute chick named Charlie Spradling in it, uh, G- who played Gina, um, who was the more attractive of the two women. So she had big titties. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, <laughs> um, because I, 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 you know, to be honest, I didn't even notice until she was nude. And it's like, oh, hey, that's interesting. Uh, it, I mean, it's an interesting movie. I, I just don't really care for where the story goes past the whole rape scene. But I will say that the um whole like show the you know magician and other you know tricks they do that's sort of interesting and the whole like really strange dinner party <laughs> i i um if i had a castle i'd probably not invite those people over to my dinner that's just me it's not something i can see myself watching again anytime soon i, I don't even particularly like it but it, it was okay for a single watch and I, I just remembered one thing that sort of bothered me. Like, Gina's character sort of just disappears. She's like, she, you know, she gets back to, you know, dealing with a painting and trying to uncover the painting. And then she sees what the painting is and then she runs back and then she doesn't do anything. I'm just somewhat disappointed by that. Like, she, she just sort of disappears and I wish she did more. If the movie focused more around her, I might be okay. I'd maybe disagree when you said that she was the most attractive out of the two. Well, not necessarily disagree, just uh, I'm a bit more neutral on that. Yeah, I, th- I thought you might be, so I was trying to throw a point of contention for us so we can fight and stuff. Uh, yeah, this, this, this is the thing worth fighting about. I mean, I've I've seen Sherilyn Fenn in other movies, and the lead actress in this one, I've seen her in other movies, and, and she's definitely very attractive. And I've I've found her more attractive in other movies than in this one, even though I still think she's attractive in this one. I mean, here she's just some rich girl. I mean, who who needs that? I mean, at least Gina's character is fun and outgoing and stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I've yeah, like I said, I've I've seen Cheryl and Penn in other movies. Pro- probably the most notable one that I I watch her in is a movie called Fatal Instinct. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's. 
it, it's like a, a spoof movie of thrillers and you, I mean, in the title alone, I, I think the title's made up of the two movies, Fatal Attraction and Basic Instinct, but it, it, it's a really hilarious movie. I, I'd recommend it. It's from the early 90s. Yeah, it might, sh- it might shock you to know I've not seen either one of those movies. <laughs> or Fatal Instinct. Yeah, it's true. Okay, well, you should watch all three. Anywho, moving on to another very important question. And I'm sure this is something everyone would love to get your opinion on. <laughs> you know, when when we see these this beast or whatever on the screen, werewolf, we, I, I don't know what you want to call them. But my question to you is, do you think that once they've transformed into this thing, that they still have a human penis? Or one of those ones like, you know, like a dog has where it's like someone winding up a thing of lipstick. Well, that is a nice uh, virtual question. Um, Though, to be honest, it has some relevance. Well, not so much in the movie, but, you know, when the brothers switch, you know, when the guy says, hey, she's all yours. He starts out human and then he becomes this beast thing. You know, I was somewhat worried, like, you know, hey, that might cause some damage. I mean, I guess... She is physically okay the next morning, from everything we can tell. But I feel like there definitely should have been something, you know. I, I have a feeling a beast that size, and it's, it's somewhat tall. I feel like there, there might be a bit much for um a human woman. But, you know, <laughs> that's just my opinion. I mean, it does say help that she was, you know, being raped. So, I mean, it's not a good situation at all. But it's okay, because she falls in love with him. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to say that I think he had a lipstick dick. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I feel like I need more... I don't want more detail, but... Um, <laughs> you need more. <laughs> you want. You, you need more, yeah. Need is such a strong word, but I feel these like... Are the, these are the things that we really need answers to. When they make a Meridian 2, um, maybe that'll be one of the things that they talk about. I guess the only other point that I had for this one... No, I, I, I did watch this again last night, but I, I must admit I didn't pay as much attention to it because I actually watched it less than 12 months ago. The, there's this thing about how this curse can be broken by her loving him. Is that right? That was what I got from it. Yeah. And, and I guess a part of that that I really take issue with is that I don't buy that she could have loved him. <laughs> like, surely, you know, feel s- sympathy or, or, or empathy or, or, well, you know, feel sorry for him and, and want to help him. But at the same time, I mean, they don't even have similar interests. Like, do they both do table tennis? I I mean, what? <laughs> there was a, I, I forget, I don't know the range that the move took place in, if it's like just a week, but it was a pretty quick turnaround. And I don't personally see, uh, maybe that, uh, Catherine, maybe she was like emotionally manipulated into loving him, and but it works out anyway. I she I, see. I don't know if we really know much about her character to really gauge that type of thing, which is sort of why I liked Gina's character more. Catherine is sort of like even after you know we see the movie, we, we don't really know much about him, and I don't personally think she's that engaging of a character to be honest. I, although I will mention one thing, I did like the old woman. Um, who was played by uh, Hilary Mason, it looks like, um, who played Martha, sort of like a housekeeper-type uh, woman. Though I think she was more important than that. Um, and there's sort of like a, a twist in the movie about her that <laughs> uh, came out of nowhere and um, didn't um, mean anything, in my opinion. But I, I did like the actress. Um, I, I thought she was probably one of the better actresses in the movie. So it's a shame she did not have a nude scene. No comment. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely seen her in other movies before. She looks very familiar. Um, I'll, I'll probably kick myself when I realize what what other movies I've seen her in. But uh, actually, it's Dolls. That's what I was thinking of. She's in Dolls. Oh, she is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I it's the same thing. I knew I knew the face, but I had no <laughs> idea where it's that before. So, and mm. that is the nineteen eighty seven classic, which is actually a legitimately solid movie for anybody listening. Yeah. I will say that, um, and this might not mean much to you because I know that you don't watch much um, classic horror, or I guess what I would call classic horror, 
um, like saw this and for this. The um, the 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 dinner scene reminded me a lot of a 1932 movie called Freaks. Um, and this is a scene very similar, with this a mansion on a table filling up, and just to clear, by mansion I mean draw for however you are to, um, you know, call those people. Um, this is a drove on the table filling up wine glasses and just, you know, being very jovial. And the scene just like that happens in the movie Freaks, which I happened to see just like a week and a half ago. So I just wanted to point it out. I have no idea if that type of thing was intentional because um, that movie also has to do with like counterful sideshow freak type people. So um, I just thought it was interesting and worth mentioning. So that's all I had. Okay, well, you can ask Charles Band. I'm sure when you do ask him, you'll somehow have a lighter wallet afterwards. Um, <laughs> you probably don't get that joke, but anyways. No. <laughs> Charles Bond did direct the movie, I do know that much. <laughs> yeah, so, Meridian, it's um, it's a movie that I didn't really feel engaged in the story. I mean, it's got, it's got a, quite a bit to the story, I, ju- I just didn't really care for the story. No, I'm not a huge fan of fantasy type movies in general and there's a quite a strong fantasy element to this one or at least fantasy vibe decent tits in the movie though F- five out of ten that's where i'm at yeah i'm not really too far removed I, I like i said i like the vibe for a lot of this i did like the sardine it's like a pretty nice looking castle but it, the, the story itself just did it do it i mean the, the beast was okay looking but then you know it got into like a whole Oh, you know, I love you, and I'll save you, and I just, it's not my thing. Um, so I, I'm giving this one a um, 5.5, and I'm going to probably lower that down to a 5 out of 10. I, I liked some stuff about it, but not enough to really make a very positive impact on me. Except the titties. You know, see, you say that, and I might remember them for another week, but that's, that's probably as far as that will go. Just uh, just another week is all you need, and then you can move on to the next pair. 